This video is a brief overview of the Axiom Product Globe File Changer. Superhero, Swiss Army Knife, Savior, three of the most common terms to describe Global File Changer. Why? Because after a dose or two of it, that's the way you're going to be thinking about it. If you have something you need to do to a number of DGN files quickly and accurately, Global File Changer is the answer. Some of its most common uses, replace or modify text, replace cells, report or modify design file settings, you can even run an extremely customized set of keyins on a specific selection of elements in all of your files. It'll do just about anything you need to do in batch to your DGN files. I'll spend the next five minutes showing you how Global File Changer can do all of these things. When you install Axiom products, you get this Axiom pull down menu and here is Global File Changer on that menu. I have it loaded here already. Now, Global File Changer is like a Swiss Army knife for MicroStation. If you come into a situation where you've got a bunch of files that you need to do the same action on, Global File Changer is very often your best resource. Um, so the first thing you would do here is press Select, and you get this Choose Files to Process dialog box, and you simply right-click Browse for Files. You can navigate to wherever, select your files like that, and uh, you would just press Open, and they would get added to this list. I'm not going to change what's here. I'm just going to use this one file for now. Now, so the first thing, major thing you can do is the ability to select elements. You see, you know how you want to come over here and say, just use uh, the standard element selection tool and select. And you go, well, I want to do something to all of these. Well, that's fine. Okay, but now what happens if you want to be able to do a selection, but you need to do it for a bunch of files? So we have this tool here under the selection menu that allows you to do basically make selections that you apply to files. You, you're basically saving a selection. So let's say, let's take this case right now. We, we want to choose only text in there. If you do run a test, you can see, well, if we were to save this file right now, we could use it to automatically select all of our text at any given time. I've got one already saved, which I'll go and uh, load right now. It's called myclock.sel. And I can just demonstrate that using this particular file, if I choose lines and do test, it selects all the lines in my file. And you can probably guess how this is going to go. That picks the hands, the numbers, and the face. So when you have a selection set, the way you actually do stuff to the elements that have been selected is with MicroStation key ins. So we also have a key in that will do all the changes once you have the stuff selected. I have a clock.key. And I can open this, and there's a lot of stuff in here. But bottom line is you have key ins that are going to make changes to the selections. We're going to make the, the active color green. You're going to change the color. You're going to set the weight. You're going to change the weight. And so this is going to do a bunch of stuff. And I'll just run it right here so you can see the, an example of it in action. And just like that, we've made all of those changes to the clock face. Now, that's only part of it. You know, that's that's something you can do because you can you so often you've got to customize this stuff. Not everybody's going to have a clock face that you're going to need to to make changes to. You've got all kinds of stuff, but that's just an example. Now, the next thing is the custom pull down. We've got lots of custom commands because not everything can be done with a key in. And there's just three in here that I really want to show you because they're the main ones that get a ton of use. The first one is manage design file settings where you can use report or update. And so what are we talking about reporting or update? That is over here. If you go to settings pull down and choose design file, it's all of these, the settings that you see in here. They're critical for people. You know, they have to be standard for a project. And so you have the option to report all those settings or actually make changes. You can choose a file that you have that's already got the right settings, design file settings, and you can say, make all of my files just like that, and it'll do it. The next thing is modify text. This is probably the most used feature in Global File Changer. And all it does is go through, find the text that you tell it to find, and make changes to it. You can see how many things there are here to do with it. I go to advanced, and there's this many other things to do with it. And here's where you choose certain uh, text strings if it's specific to um, what the value of the text element is rather than, you know, like a font or something. 
So that's that one. The last one I want to show you is replace cells. Very common, very popular to use this. And so, you know, you, you do a project, you end up with a cell, the cell gets placed, and then at the end of the project, you find out it's the wrong cell. Well, how do you change that? The easiest way is to use global file changes replace cells, where you choose the existing cell that's already there that's wrong, and then you can add a new cell that's right. And here's where you would choose the library to pull the right one from, and that's that. Uh, so you can see there's a ton of stuff you can do with Global File Changer. It's very customizable, and it'll process all the files you need to at one time. And that's it for Global File Changer. Thanks for watching.